Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Beyond the Summit ESP Shock Therapy Cup. Zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> we still didn't show that uh, Artizi Photoshop we made of oh. him electrocuting the masses. I don't know if they can see it that well. Well, you can sort of no, see I'll, a I'll, person uh, holding a... I'll scan it and we'll put it up on the screen. I think there there might be a color version somewhere. But, but for now... Black and white. <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> for what it's worth. So we've got a best of three coming at you guys live. We've got Empire versus Fnatic. It did misspeak. I thought it was going to be Speed versus Ehug first, but it's actually Empire Fnatic. That's coming up next, though. After yes, this. Yes. After this. So we've got two best of threes to wrap up our cast today. We're just getting... I was talking about wrapping up. We're just getting started. We've only done one game. We had a... It was a pretty exciting game. Back and forth. Uh, fucking Mad is on the record as saying they basically threw the game, so I don't feel bad saying that they've been throwing away leads a lot. So. Yeah. It's all true. the haters in the chat. Yeah. Take it's your medicine and shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Empire vs. Fnatic. Empire. Game yeah. Game any, one. Any predictions before we hop into this best of three? Fnatic's been looking a, a little bit shaky. Both these teams are in the losers bracket, so they've been both performing well, but I think consistency has been an issue. Right. It's hard to say. I think this is actually a really even matchup. I think a lot of it will come down to the draft mm -hmm. um, for both teams and. In this patch especially, there's been a lot of games where it's like, oh, they just got outdrafted. Like, there's the yeah. game where Venno, Venno Ancient Apparition versus Storm, no stuns, mm -hmm. Storm goes completely out of control. Yeah, uh, We've seen a lot of teams just win in, like, 20-ish minutes. We've also seen some throws as well, but yeah. uh, we'll have to see if the teams have brought their A game today. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, my prediction, Empire 2... I think 2-0, to be honest. I think they looked a lot stronger than Fnatic. You think so? I think Fnatic are going to take that momentum from the last game. I'm going to go 2-0 Fnatic. Okay. Well, All right. We're on the record. Whoever on wins the, the first game, that person's more right, at yeah. least. So. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at this draft. As we were mentioning uh, before the draft actually started, both these teams really like Ancient Apparition and Venomancer. And Fnatic have actually gone ahead and banned out Veno. And Empire are going to make some sensical bands with their first two, the No-Tail Heroes, Wisp, and Enchantress. Yeah, this has been, just as Sigma, normally the bands have been Bane and Invoker versus Fnatic, the Banes, the, the Banes, the bands have normally been <laughs> Wisp and Enchantress. Uh, they really take away Fnatic's play, two main playstyles. One of them is Tiny Wisp. Uh, and global lineups, we see Hani Invoker quite a bit solo mid. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen it yet in 6.8, but I'm sure it's in the pocket for them. Uh, but that does leave other strong heroes in the pool. They actually Dying first picked down. Luna. Now, Luna's a strong carry, but first picking her is pretty bold. Her laning stage is decent, but she is vulnerable to really strong aggressive tri lanes, uh, especially if you throw like a life stealer into the lane. And they already have a Visage, so if Empire Fenetics known for aggressive tri lanes in the past. Definitely something they can Dying turn to here. Back. They could run a safe lane clock. They could run an off lane clock, go defensive. Uh, it's still up in the air how they want to lane it, but that's definitely an option for them. As for Fnatic, Luna Alk, uh, they don't have an offlaner and they don't have a mid, so we see actually the Elder Titan getting banned, who uh, can be run either as support or offlane. I, we right. we don't see him much Five nowadays, though. Really yeah, He's kind of just fallen off. Yeah, he really has. Uh, I think it seemed to be the vision nerf He's around Astral down. Spirit was the big icing on the cake to slow down the momentum that Elder Titan was picking up. Uh, but Alchemist is going to be second picked by Fnatic. And last game, I, I thought No Tails Alchemist had a really good start in the mid game. He didn't have a big impact, and then he made some recovery farm. And towards the end, Fnatic he had a pretty big impact. It seems Fnatic are still valuing Alchemist pretty high, despite his nerfs in the last patch. Yeah. Also, I wanted to mention that both teams in the series really value Venomancer as a support and Ancient Apparition to a lesser extent. Mm -hmm. But neither one will be seen this game, so we'll see some fresh supports from Empire Visage. Uh, something they definitely have run in the past, but they were the first team in this tournament to run that Venno AA combo. Very strong late game for the damage output, but yeah. obviously vulnerable to heroes that are mobile like Weaver, Storm, etc. So yeah. now Fnatic, they could secure a solo a solo mid. Uh, they'll probably save that for later since Empire have gone Invoker. I'd expect to see them pick up an offlaner. Uh, Timbersaw, Prophet are available. Clockwork for Trixie is gone. Um, I'm thinking Nature's Prophet is the most likely. Uh, they could also just get a support here, as both teams do need some. So Crystal Maiden's out there. Or oh, and they go with the Dazzle. Could be, could be solo mid, could be support. Yeah. What do you think it's going to be? It's really hard to say. Have we seen Fnatic run Dazzle in this tournament so far? I don't no. think Fnatic has they been a Well, they might have run it as a support. I don't think so, but they definitely have not run it solo yeah, mid. Yeah, they definitely haven't done it mid. 
How does Dazzle fare against Invoker mid? Uh, that's sort of a rough, a rough matchup. That I think Dazzle is really good base damage, attack animation, and stats, and yeah. the stat growth is quite good. So, especially for the early levels, I'd expect Dazzle to win the CS war. But he's not gonna like solo kill Invoker unless he gets a lucky rune or a gank. So, right, I'd say it's Dazzle favorite early, but probably pretty even later on. Uh, it does yeah. depend on the supports movement. Uh, it's not like an OD versus Invoker where you just trash the enemy hero really badly, though. Right, right. I believe uh, we actually maybe we saw No Tail playing a Dazzle uh, earlier on, and maybe the first day of the tournament. So No Tail played Alchemist, a very versatile setup here for Fnatic. It is hard to read where they want to go, and I wouldn't totally count out Alchemist mid. I think that could be a possibility, though. It's important to note that Fnatic have been consistently running seconds. dual mids, especially if there's an Invoker on the other team. That's what they did last match, and it ended up working out for them. So I wouldn't count out a dual lane there in the mid. Yeah, uh, Luna. Luna's been going solo mid for Fnatic, so that's definitely an option. They could run uh, like Alchemist. They could run, like, CM Luna mid, uh, Dazzle plus one. Alchemist isn't really good at off later. I mean, I don't think we're going to see a farming Alk, so... I don't know. Neither of these heroes is a great dual lane partner mid. Dazzle and Luna is okay, but not yeah. really a dominant dual lane. So, we'll have yeah. to wait and see. But I, what I do expect from Fnatic, especially with an Invoker for Empire, is a lot of early roaming. No Tail started Boots and Tangos last game. I was just constantly smoke ganking. Yeah. Hit the problem for Fnatic is that they have really effective early game ganks, and then their supports inevitably, like every single game, fall behind in levels. Last game they got to catch up because the game turned around, but yeah. for Fnatic, I'd like to see them transition back into pulling a little bit earlier and just securing levels for their support. Yeah, and they did that sort of funky, almost triple support kind of a lineup where they had the Venomancer who was technically solo safe lane, but he ended up just jungling, and again, he made some recovery, but that early to mid game was definitely a little bit rocky. Uh, in terms of their supports and, and their levels and their farm. It's like the first five minutes go really well for them, and then they just they run out of smokes, because <laughs> they had used all three, <laughs> yeah. and they just fall behind in levels. But, yeah. but Alk and Dazzle are very good farming support, so yeah. I, if they want to keep up with Empire, they d certainly can. So now oh, Fnatic will work on their fourth pick, and it's kind of up in the air. Now it looks right. more like a support Dazzle. Yeah. Probably an off lane Bristleback. They could aggressive tri lane this, but I'm expecting just to see a lot of roaming, maybe a dual lane mid, Luna Dazzle, off lane Bristle, Alk roaming, and then like a strong independent safe laner. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I suppose there is a small chance they could do an Alchemist Dazzle dual lane mid and then grab somebody for Luna up in the maybe a safe lane and then do an off lane Bristle back. I don't think so, just because Fnatic doesn't really run farming Alk. Yeah, that's and true. Alk as a melee support is not going to be a good support for a dual lane mid. Right. Yeah. In it's, theory, it's possible, but it's, I don't think so. Uh, and I only say that because Dazzle and Alchemist have some synergy together. The minus armor from the acid spray, all of Dazzle's physical. It is a scary duo lane, but more of a pub stomping lane than uh, a lane we see in, in competitive games. So They're better when they can chase as well. In mid yeah. lane, you can't really chase them. That's that's true. So I, I'm skeptical, but it's it's sort of a strange draft for Fnatic, and I wouldn't count, count it off it's, the table as a possibility. It's Both of their supports, if Dazzle is a support, are very greedy. They need a lot of levels right. and a lot of farm. And Luna, obviously, uh, a greedier pick. I mean, she can contribute to fights a bit, but where she's strongest is just pushing early towers and then getting 5-6 slotted and going late game, like we saw in the last game. So seconds. her mid game is where she generally is mediocre, needs to farm the BKB, then needs to work towards like a Manta style. Yeah. Um, and she's got like a, an early crest and then kind of bottoms out a bit, and then later on is really scary. So, Empire go Bane, and now their ganking is really strong. Sleep into Cogs, into uh, Sunstrike, lots of ways for them to run it. And it will be a farming Dazzle as... Oh no, it will be a farming Alk. Okay, it is going to be a solo mid Alk. Maybe oh. they... I don't think they're going to dual lane him, though. Yeah. And they run a jungle Chen for no tail. Interesting. Not the way I thought this draft was going to unfold for Fnatic, but they're still going to stick pretty much the same general idea that they had in the last game with uh, three quote-unquote support type heroes, one in the jungle. And I'm going to be curious to see how much this alchemist actually farms or moves around. It is on Hani, so we would suspect he's going to be solo mid just farming against that invoker. But Fnatic's a team that likes to switch it up and, and make those lanes a little bit less predictable. So we'll see when we get into the game for sure. Yeah, just have to see how they want to lane it. But 
Very, very greedy draft from Fnatic. Everyone yeah. needs levels in farm. Nobody is like a Shadow Demon, Crystal Maiden, right. Rubik type hero that can still contribute with relatively little farm. So if Empire get ahead early, Fnatic could have quite a few just walking sacks of gold, so to speak, on their <laughs> side. And uh, I guess we're going to have a quick pause here before we get underway. Yeah. And no tail. First item. Going to buy himself a smoke. Can't say that I'm surprised, LD. Wards and smoke. No tail style. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to move around pretty early on. Yeah. Um, on Chen, though, it's not really the best here to do that. That's why, generally, Fnatic prefers Enchantress as a jungler. It was banned, so, of course, if they want one, Chen's the next best choice. But right. it's more of a passive support, and that's the other consideration. Dazzle, Chen, not a particularly strong dual roaming combo until they get levels. It's not like a Rubik Chen or a Shadow Demon Chen. Uh, or a Bane Chen, where you have a really great setup. They just have the Poison Touch. So yeah. if Fnatic can't roam early, can they still have a good laning stage? That's going to be the big question, because they tend to rely on it. And Empire, five-man smoke at level one. Yeah, they're going to rotate into the Radiant Jungle, it looks like. They'll walk by the Roche Pit, make sure no trickery is afoot. And they're going to rotate their way down. So possibly a level one engage inbound. They may bump into Hani, who is poking forward. Oh no, Hani's going to walk right into it. They have no cold snap, though, and the Bane is a bit faster than Alk, but they're diving a long way. Nice job fogging. Hani, he is going to get caught by the Nightmare. This is looking like a first blood in favor of Empire. Oh, Hani, you're in big trouble, my friend. That's a dead Alchemist. Yep, Empire likes to level one smoke. This is not yeah. the first time we've seen them do it. They did it, I think, twice in the Liquid series. Once they got first blood on Fluff, once it backfired. It's one of those things that will work probably one game in a best That's of three, really but if you do it again, the enemy yeah. team's unlikely to be caught off guard. So teams that play Empire moving forward, they should do their homework. See, they like these level one smokes and play more carefully. But Yeah, and it was Resolution on the Invoker who got that extra gold, so he's going to buy him Blade of Attack straight away. Oh, that's, that's big, actually. Really going to help that mid lane presence, yeah. He's still up against a dual lane, but, I mean, Dazzle, Luna, they can just right-click harass you. You'd rather have like a CM here to actually threaten for a kill early on, but right. Uh, we'll see how he does. He's not going to get much CS, but we've seen before that, you know, you can run like a Death Prophet mid. She doesn't get much farm, and you still can contribute later on. Yeah. The issue for Invoker though is he doesn't have a nuke to CS with like Death Prophet does. So right. Resolution may struggle struggle more against this dual lane than what we saw Bulba struggle in the previous series. And by the way, No Tail has just abandoned his jungle and has gone aggressive. Yeah, he is in the Dire Jungle, going to pick up a Satyr Tormentor to start things off. Get that Shockwave Harass coming in. Already, always when a fly will rotate to the mid lane on the Visage to try and help out Resolution and secure at least a little bit of farm coming his way. That means down in the bottom lane, it's a solo Hani playing on the Alchemist, and he's up against a duo lane of his own. Vanscor on the Bane, and Silent on the Gyrocopter. And of course that leaves us with the top lane, the only solo lane, Trixie on the Bristleback, and Mag on the Clockwork. Empire would have the much stronger tri lane if they were, were in a tri lane scenario. Like, if it's Visage, Bane, Gyro, Luna, Dazzle, and Chen are not going to do anything against that. So, they like the dual lane Luna, and I think in large part it's because they don't want to have to deal with really strong aggressive tri lanes, and so they dodge it this game. But the downside is that Hani is now safe lane out, and he's getting okay experience, but he could just get caught out once Gyro gets boots. You can just sleep him, run him with Rocket Barrage, and if not kill him, then make him burn like all his regen. And he's only got three Tangos. Yeah. Trying to save for boots. And this mid lane actually not going so well for Fnatic. It looks like Fly and Arrow are getting way out harassed by Resolution and always want to fly. The last hits still aren't quite reflecting it. Resolution 2 1. Here comes No Tail. 5 2 Luna. And you're absolutely light, right. New, uh, looking for an opportunity to do the wraparound. Now he has a Centaur Conqueror. Looking for that War Stomp stun. And they are going to press forward. This could be the opening that No Tail's been looking for. Oh boy, is it ever an opening? <laughs> They're <Yeah>. so screwed. <laughs> he's on his way in. Always want to fly. Going to take a Lucent Beam. There's the Poison Touch from the Dazzle. Always want to fly. Knows he's going to die. Looking for a turnaround, perhaps, on to fly. Of course, won't find it. No Tail. Going to walk away. One kill richer. At least it wasn't the Invoker that died. So Empire should be happy about that. But still, for now, to get the first blood. No, Even no, no, no. I Empire had the first blood. Oh, did they really? Yeah, remember Resolution, that whole thing in the jungle? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> the the fir first flood in air quotes, I guess. <laughs> but they, yeah, you're, uh, in the end, they get the kill, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. yeah. One could certainly say that, LD. Man, I had a bunch of coffee this morning, so I have no excuses <laughs> either. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, dude. Uh, the offlane we haven't looked at for Fnatic, it's a Bristleback versus Clockwork. So 
pretty even matchup in general. Both heroes have their strengths. If Clock can isolate... Pers oh, he might go in again mid. No tails yeah. and Invis room. Uh-oh. And the Centaur. Or actually, no, that was a, oh, smoke, a smoke, not an Invis room, yeah. but they're going to go right in onto Resolution. War Stomp. <laughs> well, will connect, but always want to fly. Going to have the burst to finish off Dazzle before Resolution goes down. He does get the Ghost Walk off, but the poison from Fly's Dazzle will be enough to finish him off. And they at least trade a one for one. Dazzle for Invoker. I'm sure Fnatic is happy with that. That's big that the poison was there because they didn't have any detection on No-Tell. Without it, would have lived. Yeah. So... Yeah, overall, Gyro's farming well for Empire. Uh, the Clockwork's doing even with the he's even with the Bristleback, and I would say maybe a slight edge to Bristle, but there is a kill potential for Clockwork if he's got full HP and finds Bristleback with Battery Assault. Mm -hmm. uh, he hits pretty damn hard once he's level five to seven. But yeah. uh, overall, seems like Fnatic are getting the slight edge in the lanes, uh, aside from the first blood. Like if you ignore that, uh, I'd say overall advantage Fnatic. Yeah, but because of it, pretty even. Yeah, Empire have found a gold lead, but the experience lead going the way of Fnatic. And in the mid lane, Resolution will be engaged on again. Poison Touch, Lucent Beam will take him down to about half health, and he will walk away. No tail, going a more aggressive build. Level 3, two points in the Poison Touch, no points in Grave. So, going slightly more aggressive. We'll probably want to grab a level 4 Grave, but did cost him a little bit as he did concede that death in the last engage. No tail has one more Centaur. He's out of mana at this point, though, so if they go on mid, they don't have Test of Faith, and that's going to limit their ability to find a kill. And they may engage already. Always want to fly, doing a fair bit of damage to Aaron. Now they switch on to fly. He will get the heal off, but won't be enough to keep him alive. In comes the Chen. Centaur from the backside, but Vanscore is rotated in as well on the Bane. Aaron is in big trouble. The Tornado to interrupt him. A few more auto attacks ought to do it. Down he goes. Now No Tail not out of the clear yet. Vanscore with a Nightmare. Do they have the setup to finish him off here? And they do. A double kill coming out. That's a three for nil swing in the mid lane going the way of Empire. Yeah. There was no mana on Luna. She was at half HP. Doesn't have boots yet. And no tail didn't have mana for Test of Faith. And they were diving past the river right as Bane wrapped around. And this goes back to the level one movement from Empire where they five man to Fnatic's jungle. Fnatic didn't have wards in their woods. So they had no idea where the Bane is. If you look at their vision, they're completely blind. So, you dual lane mid, what are you going to do? Just hug your tower whenever Bane's missing? That's pretty difficult. And ultimately, this is where uh, that level 1 movement, even though it, if, even if they didn't get the first blood, can still come back to give you a big advantage in the lanes anyway. And Well, now they have a huge lead. Yeah. And it also goes back to that Dazzle going slightly more greedy. Now going to have the Shallow Grave, but that's twice now. If he had just gone the one 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 opener, probably could have bought himself... Well, definitely could have bought himself some time, possibly... Uh, could have found himself surviving there. So it's all about trade-offs when you uh, start with those dazzle, dazzle skill builds. Down in the bottom, uh, Concoction will fly onto Silent, but no follow-up going to be there to I just want to point out the difference between No-Tail and Fluff's Chen. Like, Fluff was farming a lot more early, and mm -hmm. No-Tail just loves... He loves to gank, man. He just gets bored, I think, more than <laughs> anything else. <laughs> Well, farming's, farming's for fools, and now Hani's on the chase. Yeah, and he's going to charge up a concoction. He will get it off. Always want to fly in big trouble. No tail should be able to finish him off. Will Hani survive, though? That's the question. Fly, the heal, the shallow grave, and that should be enough to keep Hani alive, assuming no tail can finish off this homing missile. And, well, he will be able to regen up, so that... Uh, Chemical Rage helping out Alchemist. Hani has done well getting experience, but his farm is non-existent. He is one and zero oh in terms of last hits and denies. Du it's hard when you're dual lane when you're uh, when you're up against a solo radiant, uh, oh, a safe lane solo for the radiant because you can't pull. On the dire side, you can pull this camp over here, mm -hmm. um, but on the radiant, there's no such pull. So it's hard to keep the lane back, which is why we're seeing Hani get experience and. That's just a, an advantage for the rating in the laning stage. But Empire is still made up for it reasonably well elsewhere. I mean, gold lead, 1750. Experience pretty close. My concern for Fnatic is heading into the mid game. They're not getting a ton of farm or levels on their Chen or their Dazzle, who both just have basic boots at seven and a half minutes. And these are heroes that need quite a bit to contribute later on. Yeah. At least Alchemist is the one not getting farm, and Grievel's Greed will give him a little bit of recovery later on. But we'll hold that thought as there's an engagement down bottom. They want to go for Silent. Unstable Concoction to start it off. There was a Poison Touch, but now reinforcements are here. Fly will get put to sleep. No Tail will be the first to fall. Fly in big trouble. Won't even be able to get the Grave off as the calldowns come. Empire going to take an easy 2-0, and maybe it's going to be 3 as a Hookshot connects with Hani. Cogs come out. He's going to channel the Concoction but it won't be enough to keep him alive. I don't think a few more auto attacks. There's the tornado to slow him down. 
and that will make it an easy kill. Three for nil, going the way of Empire. And the tower as well. Tier 1's pretty much, and I don't think Fnatic are going to get a trade. Notel's trying to push top. He does have a tornado, and they're farming a decent stack. So they'll get some golden experience there, but yeah, big win for Empire. Tier 1 going down in the enemy safe lane is always huge. It makes it much harder to farm safely, and... Era didn't have a TP there, but I don't think it would have mattered even if he did. The level 1 Eclipse when there's four heroes grouped up like that isn't that scary, so... Right. Uh, yeah, Vampire just stronger at this stage of the game in general. The one hero who could maybe make a difference is Trixie's Bristle. Uh-oh, Era in the mid lane. He's going to be in big trouble, overstepping his bounds as they rotate towards the mid, and he's going to get punished. The Tornado to set it up, the Cogs to trap him in, and that is one dead Luna. Now Hani, maybe not out of the clear quite yet. Fly will wake him up from the Nightmare, and they will toggle it back to the high ground. They both survive. No Grave. He went for the heal first and then Grave, and although the Luna probably would have died anyway, just made it an easier kill. Mm -hmm. I oh. want to see Trixie get involved, though. He's got Dyer's Vanguard, top the Tier 1's down top attack. now, and Dyer's it's really time for the Bristle to join the fights because he's by far their strongest hero at this stage of the game. Alk is level 6, but has no items, just a medallion on the way soon. And if he's not getting involved, then they're just going to keep on feeding. Yeah, and No-Tail will take this opportunity to farm up a little bit in the jungle, very close to level 6, more than halfway there. And that Hand of God is very important in these early stages, especially given the aggression that Empire has put out, will help in these team fights as we move into another pause. Yeah, Empire doesn't have the best internet. Yeah, they've... Uh, Clock sure. can't control themselves. Consistently be having issues. <laughs> oh, and he might, he might actually die here. Looks like uh, he does have yeah, ten so stick charges. See what they're talking about. They're, this is a begging for mercy. <laughs> he was just standing here while Trixie went on him for a little bit, but I think Fnatic need this kill. <laughs> <laughs> what do? <laughs> now Trixie's he's the villain if he takes the kill, and, yeah. and then if he he's doesn't, he's the idiot if he doesn't. Right? Yeah, this, this is, is a like, kind of a lose lose for the bristle back. I'll yeah. buy you a beer in Kiev next star ladder. <laughs> That's a voucher for a free beer in about a month and a half. I don't know if that's a very sweet deal or not for Trixie. Is this, <laughs> is this corruption? <laughs> See, even this is mind games from Empire. They just want to get Fnatic drunk so they, they fall short at Star Ladder. Yeah. <laughs> it's all a strategy in disguise. It is fair play, not a corruption. Yeah. So, yeah, Empire's yeah. obviously really far ahead. Yeah, they're in great shape. 3k gold, 2k experience, or 1.5k. But it's not just the flat lead. It's like, look at their heroes. They're all hitting really big timing windows soon. This is just at level 6. He's not far off a mech. Actually has 850 gold. Uh, Bane has Fiend Script now, so he can set up kills. Clockwork's level 8, so definitely can find kills around the map. And Invoker, not really that strong yet. He's only got level 3 wax. Generally, it's like level 4 to 5 wax, where your tornado starts to have mm -hmm. a pretty good uh, distance and just damage output. But... He's still strong enough to do some stuff, and obviously their gyro's having a great start. So Empire should just be looking to take a lot of fights right now, and Fnatic, yeah. they want to be the greedier team, stack the Ancients, play defensively, uh, and just eke whatever farm they can off the map. But it's hard with losing your Tier 1 mid. Look at their jungle. Empire sees almost everything there, and yeah. Fnatic does not see very much. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head about Trixie. He really needs to start getting involved. He's actually the highest level in the game. We will resume, and what's going to happen between Trixie and Mag... Good guy, Trixie. He's going to let Mag walk back to the base. Look at this guy. Mercy, please. Mercy, Bristleback. What a nice guy. Nice guys finish last, though. That's true. <laughs> okay, well, they won't day. be last anyway, because they did... Uh... Oh, actually, no, this would be two losses. No, they, they won They won the one match, yeah. So they yes. won't be at the bottom of the tournament. But... No, they won't be the first eliminated, but um, yeah, still... This is an elimination. Uh, this is elimination day. Everything is in the losers bracket. So worth reiterating this best of three series. Loser does go home. Winner moves on. They're going on mid, and always want to fly has familiars. Uh, and an invisibility rune. I don't think Honey knows how much trouble he's well, in. But Vangscore has been spotted, and they're gonna deward. Nice deward. Yep, yeah, will limit some of that fanatic vision. Even and silence. Like this is really smart by Empire. They know how strong they're, and they're just let's fight right now. Yeah. And Visage just staying on the high ground, waiting for an opening. But Hani, he's a little bit too oh, smart for it. got him with the familiars. Oh, the second oh. stun didn't come through. 
Radiance Always want to fly his diving. He's going to feed. Oh, no. Visage overstepping his bounds. Perhaps a beautiful defensive nightmare will buy him a little bit of time. Going to be able to throw one more nuke, and the Visage will survive. Nope, not for long. Luna <laughs> going to finish him off with the Lucent Beam. Now Trixie, though, stuck in a Fiend's Grip. There's the Hand of God to come out to buy him some time. Still, Trixie going to fall. The Eclipse comes out from Era. Will secure the kill on the Invoker. Still a back and forth engage. Now the Poison Touch onto Mag. That'll slow them down. Hani with the stun. And it will be a one for three. Fnatic getting some much needed kills here in the mid lane. All started by that huge overcommitment from the Visage. Yeah, there was a great defensive sleep from Empire as well that almost kept him alive, but this then... This close? Yeah. <laughs> this, this close. This close! Ugh. But then Era showed up. And that's a big win for Fnatic, obviously, but mostly because they needed <laughs> they needed something going their way. Their jungle isn't safe to farm, but they take a tier one so they get gold they couldn't find through normal means elsewhere. Now the Ogre Club's out for Era. No Tails level 7, so he has a big creep army, and things are really stabilizing. Yeah. We just... You know, I in general, 6.79 and 6.8 have been snowball versions, meaning the team that gets out to a fast lead almost always wins, it feels. But mm -hmm. in this tournament, Zary, it's been the team that gets out to a fast lead throws it away very quickly. Yeah, a lot of our games have been really back and forth. We've seen so many games where one team takes an edge, and then they get team wiped, and then the other team gets some momentum, and then they get team wiped, and all of these back and forths between the Roche pit. It has been an interesting back and forth tournament. Yeah. I, hey, it makes for more entertaining Dota. And I'm not CIS complaining. Carnage was a lot like that as well. Here's a smoke yeah. gank from Vainscore. But Trixie is going to take all these Ancients. They see him, but they just can't kill him without like five heroes here. I think Fly is going to be in big trouble. A homing missile coming his way. The smoke to wrap around. The courier. Fly, a little too smart for it though. He will retreat to the tier two. They're not going to dive it. Perhaps they'll just settle for Trixie. They'll take it. That's a dead bristleback after farming those Ancients. He did get all the Ancients, so it's not the biggest deal, but it's still pretty nice. And they're going to force this fight top. There's no hook shot here. I don't know if they can take it. Need to be a little bit careful. There's the stun. Will connect with two. The Dazzle Weave to follow up. Both Silent and Mag in big trouble. Mag will just position himself to try and buy time for his friend Clockwork. Won't be enough, though. Era stands his ground. Ten hit points remaining. There's the positive urn. And Luna will walk away surviving. Resolution, though, not going to be so lucky. Bristleback chases him down. Another great exchange for Fnatic. Uh, one for three, and they defend their top tier one. Man, Empire, keep on overextending. Now they want to go on No-Tail, but he's got ways to cancel this Fiend's Grip. That's a wasted Fiend's Grip, and oh. he can't turn it around, but... Still, he survives. That's a victory. If they had, I feel like if Empire had their mech, this would be a much different game, and Visage almost has it now. Yeah. If he hadn't dived earlier, he probably would have it by now, so... Yep. Those, those slight... Or, or in some cases, extreme moments of overaggression <laughs> really coming back to haunt them. And No Tail's getting close to his mech. He's got the two core pieces and about halfway to the recipe, so he may just go back and farm a little bit more passive in the next few moments. And those mech timings will be actually pretty comparable with one another, despite Visage having a huge advantage on that front. He had the two core pieces before No Tail even had his buckler complete, I think. And now they're just about even after those two team fights. One thing I do want to mention is that Dyer's Trixie did use buyback in that last fight. Did not mention it, but oh. early early game buyback for three kills for the team, definitely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Bristle now with his power treads and also going to pick up a cloak. So perhaps uh, this will be a pipe game for Bristleback. Or it could be a casual cloak. Still hard to say, but... Yeah, pipe would be good this game. There's a lot of AoE nukes from Empire. Um, but And I think it's a good item on Bristleback in general, but yeah. Cloak's good too. So we'll have, we'll just see where he wants to go. Yeah. So still a very well-rounded build. Also the Basilius. He's got armor. He's got some magic resistance. And of course, he's got a nice HP buffer with that Vanguard. A very well-rounded Bristleback opening. And he's going to use it on Silent here, perhaps. They will deny that top tier one. And no, no engage. Fly is going to manage to deward the Ancients. He dropped one sentry, got the enemy sentry, but he didn't get the actual Observer Ward until he dropped the second one. So, took two sentries, but now they've got their Ancients back. And Ancients are very important for a team with Alk, Bristle, and Luna. Yeah. Also pretty important for Empire, but they've been much more interested in team fighting than they have been uh, in Ancients. And meanwhile, uh -oh. Silent caught out. And Sable Concoction to start things off. No Tail with the net. Compliments of that Dark Troll Summoner. Silent will throw a call down, going to buy himself some time, and he will actually survive this 1v3 assault. Support is on the way. Fnatic have absolutely no vision into the dire jungle, so they're not going to overcommit. They will make the smart choice and back up to safety. Empire still haven't taken Tier 1 mid, despite having such an early... You know, you go back to that one push mid, and they should have at least been able to bring it all, you know, to like 10% HP or something, but 
The overextension, since then they haven't revisited it, and now they'll go in with a hookshot. And Fly in big trouble. He will get the Shallow Grave off to buy himself some time. Support coming in. He gets the Weave off as well. There's the um, <laughs> the ultimate from Bane on Trixie. And still the mech there just in time to keep Dazzle alive. He survives the assault. And now Vanscore in big trouble. The Fiend's Grip is down. Hani in the front lines. Chemical Rage is on. Still needs to be a little careful. Hani has been able to farm up a Vanguard. So now his HP buffer a little bit better. And he can survive in that front line. Silent again. A defensive nightmare coming out. Will absorb that stun. Silent not out of the clear quite yet. But big call downs on the way. Silent doing so much damage. Empire are looking for a turnaround. They get the kill on Luna. No Tail dangerously low. Though still alive. They're on the back foot. Empire looking to pursue. This tier 1 tower still alive will help Fnatic quite a bit. Hani gonna stun himself, but Empire won't be in a position to capitalize on that Alchemist misplay. Jesus, what amazing Bane play from Vangscore. He really turned that one around. And that was with Resolution. He had to run all the way down the river, and then he, he looked like he was just gonna go bottom and then decided to run back mid. So they had no Invoker in that fight for a good like 15 20 seconds he's zoned out a bit by the bristleback and yeah in the end they still end up breaking even there what looked to be a disastrous fight and with taking the tier one mid it's a win for empire yeah absolutely it, the topsy-turvy game <laughs> graph goes up graph goes down yeah graph giving me the spins well played by Fnatic to start that off, though. Fly did survive, and No-Tail got there just in time to use the mech and get Fly back up to an acceptable level of hit points, and the Dazzle did survive the assault. So at least that was a positive to start it off, though. Maybe uh, maybe an overcommit after uh, that opening. BKB coming soon on the Gyro, and looking at Empire's, the, way, the style they're playing, their lineup's pretty good late game, but... They didn't go for an early Helm of the Dominator on Gyro. They also have not been stacking the Ancients at all in the offlane. Whereas Fnatic, um, they farmed one Ancient stack earlier, and we're going to see Era actually looks like he might go... He bought Ogre Club first, I believe, right? I think he bought Ogre Club first, and it looks like yes. he's going back for Dominator. So if he can get away with this, Fnatic will come out and ahead in the farm war if it goes on like five minutes or so. Whereas Empire... They're Russians. They like to fight. Yeah, and this is actually <laughs> uh, what they did with Luna in the last game as well. The Ogre Club first resolution. into a casual Morbid Mask, and yeah, Resolution going to be engaged on here. The Acid Spray Concoction. There's the Ensnare. That is a dead Invoker. Fnatic will find themselves into a free kill, but he actually kept it as a casual Morbid Mask until he got the BKB last time, um, and okay. then finished up the Helm of so, the Dominator. So maybe he'll do that again. So, yeah, that was... Looks like he is saving for BKB, yeah. and yep, gets the recipe, so you were right. Yeah, just likes that casual Morbid Mask for a little bit of extra sustain. Makes uh, ricing in the jungle a little easier, I guess. Yes, who knew Idiom Mask could help you rice <laughs> or eat rice? <laughs> Seems like it would make it harder, but what do I know? This Bristleback still doing well in terms of farm. Gyrocopter still topping the charts of net worth, but Bristle nipping at his heels now has the Hood of Defiance up, so plenty of magic resistance and still uh, assuming that he's going to transition into a pipe to help out the team. Empire have started stacking Ancients, but Fnatic are one step ahead of them. This is going to be a triple stack for Fnatic and Empire, just their first dual stack of the game. Yeah. So it seems like it's going to fall back into a little bit more of a farm fest, and I definitely favor Fnatic in that. They they have more heroes that can uh, flash farm. Era on the Luna, Trixie on the Bristleback, and Fly, or sorry, Hani on the Alk. All three of these heroes flash farm really well. For Empire, it's really just Gyro that does, so... This is not the tempo that Empire wants. If they can yeah. for force some fights with Gyro BKB, just Gyro's not completed, that would be much more attack. to their liking. Yeah, and speaking of Flash Farm, Hani has made an unbelievable recovery. He had absolutely no CS in the laning phase, and now he's middle of the pack, about 4.5 on the net worth chart, ahead of the other supports in the game. So he has really made a good recovery. That Gyro's Vanguard, I think, was a smart choice, and allowing him to move into the front lines, as Fnatic will group up for a five-man push down bottom. A defensive weave, com weave comes out, and I think this tier 1 tower will be slated to fall, though Empire are ready to defend. They have a glyph available. They are posturing, possibly looking for an Mike's opening. here. Is he going to go? There's a glyph. There's the glyph. There's the tornado. Hani charging the stun. Will be able to get it off, but an EMP going to go off. That's all of their mana. The Hand of God comes out. Era will get caught in the Fiend's Grip, but a shallow grave there to keep him alive. Still no kills secured, but Era is in big trouble. He will use the Eclipse, but gets dropped right away. Down goes the Chen to follow up, and now Trixie not out of the clear. He'll get stuck inside of the cogs. Another unstable concoction comes to buy him some time, but it won't be enough. A three for nil exchange, and maybe not over. Hani trying to pour it out. 
He will make it and fly. Also probably slated uh -oh. to fall. Still yeah, pursuing. he dead. He dead. Yeah, he dead. He's going to have another shallow grave, but that will at best buy him a few seconds. Not even going to find that. A four for nil, LD. The tower falls. It was destroyed, not denied, but still four heroes for a tower. I think Empire will take it. Yeah, not, not worth the tower at all. <laughs> and basically what that fight came down to was a nice hook shot by Mag and the gyro picking up BKB right before the fight. Fnatic were obviously not prepared for the BKB pickup. Was delivered just like a few seconds before Mag went in. Empire were baiting that hard. They glyphed when it had like 50 HP, so yeah. Fnatic playing greedy, Empire punishing it. And now they're going to take, I think they're going to take Roche. They don't have the fastest Roche lineup, but and Fnatic are just not in any position to fight. Yeah, that Invoker really set that up. A Tornado to initiate, and that EMP hit at least four members of Fnatic, if not all five. And that was a great way to start the fight for Empire. We've really seen Quaswex Invoker show his strength, not as a laner. I, his laning was n not very impressive against the dual lane mid, but just as a, a hero to turn fights around in the mid game, and particularly pushing into this hero is really hard. And if you look at Empire, their whole lineup's hard to push into. Uh, whether it's EMP Tornado, Hookshot, or Calldown, all three of those heroes are very scary when you're clumping up as five around a tower. And yeah. Fnatic were way too clumped. Y you need to spread, but this bottom lane is a very... This is one of the narrowest choke points in the game, really. Like, you compare that to mid, it's pretty narrow, but you can have heroes over here, or over here, as well as at the ramp, and it's really hard to avoid getting caught by the AoE. Just a, a difficult right. lane to push into. Yeah, it was also unfortunate that Era wasn't able to get off that Eclipse. He used the cooldown, but died after maybe one beam got out, and he got dropped just about instantly. It was a cute play to try to move into the trees and get the beams over where he was fogged, but still had vision, but... Unfortunately, Empire was wise to it, and they punished it. Now, and they also didn't have BKB on Luna, which yes. they just now picked up. But I think even if the Luna had BKB, it would not have made that big of a difference. Because she got off a decent amount of Eclipse damage, it just wasn't really enough. So, mm -hmm. what, Did she? I, I thought it only it channeled for a... two, at least two. At least two? Okay, so it went a little bit. I don't think I two beams would have changed that fight. But, yeah. Because the Gyro was just... He took forever to die. Yeah. And interestingly enough, Trixie going to go for Drum of Endurance uh, instead of a pipe straight away. So he's going to get the team a little bit of extra aura movement speed and going to up his HP buffer just a little bit. Interesting to see Drum after the Vanguard and Hooded Defiance. This clock is fat, man. Yeah, that's a very just like mid-game oriented Bristleback build. Yeah. Very tanky. And they're smoked up. Oh, but... honey. Oh, no. He's going to stun himself. That's going to be the initiation that Empire were looking for. Though Chen will be nearby, and he'll send his buddy back to the well. So Fnatic get a pass on that one, though a close call. Yeah, nicely done. They do have one hero back at base while the push is coming, and Chemical Rage is about to be down by the time he arrives. So if Fnatic want to fight this, they do it without Chemical Rage. Era does have a TP. Hmm, I don't think they want to defend this. They probably just want to split push. Yeah, and that seems to be their strategy. We've got Era down in the bottom and two in the mid, though they're not at the towers quite yet. I don't think this is going to work out well for Fnatic. This tower is almost down. They've already popped the glyph, and as we see, both lanes in full retreat mode as supports come into that bottom tower. No way Era is going to be able to stand on his lonesome. Man, this clock's really far. As I was, tr I was about to mention earlier that we had that big fight, he's almost got Ags. Ags, four staff. He's four, or sorry, three, two, and five, but they have three outer towers down, and he just has decent CS. 83 CS, almost three and a half to four minute for a hero that's been ganking constantly. Pretty good. Yeah. But Fnatic, they've found Empire's Ancient stack, and they don't want to give it up. Oh, Van score. He's on the high ground. Does have better positioning, but still needs to be a little careful here. Support is going to be inbound, and there will be a battle for this Ancient stack. A couple of them very low. Trixie's going to pick off one of them as Resolution comes in to try and clear up the remaining low Ancients. Where's the Gyro? Gyro has to go base and just picked up a Demon Edge. Needs to buy a TP scroll, I think, and get down here soon. But Fnatic, they didn't have their Alchemist there either. Now Mag's going to rotate in. So Fnatic won't be able to steal the Ancients. They are stacking their own. It's Even though we've seen some clashes, it's really just been a, a game of who's getting more off the map. And Empire, in theory, should get less, but they've been finding more kills and, and thus limiting Fnatic's ability to farm the jungle. Yeah more kills and the tower count actually is not that uneven only a one tower lead for empire four to three that is there only one tier two tower down it is the one in the top that we just saw fall and empire will finish off their ancient stacks continue moving around looks like gyrocopter just assuming that luna will grab a butterfly at some point in this game 
And he wants to go raw damage. Going to start off with a, an MKB straight after the BKB. Yeah, really good cost-efficient damage item. Easy to build. Uh, offers you more DPS. And Empire don't have as many secondary sources of damage as Fnatic do. Fnatic have three heroes that can hit pretty hard in the late game. Whereas Empire really only has the Gyro. So going more of a hard carry build. I'd like to see them fight with the Aegis. Five heroes bottom. You've got Aegis. You have two minutes on it. Uh, just bring Mag down there with the Ags and force a fight. And they're starting to group up, but they need Mag to join them ASAP. Yeah. looks. Uh, it appears that Fnatic will want to make a hold at this bottom Tier 2 tower. They are starting to rotate. Era is the only one not with them uh, as Dazzle heads towards the mid lane. Though Empire slowly starting to converge as well. Looks like uh, Resolution just trying to bait this out. Maybe open up for a hook shot. There is a double damage rune bottom, and Gyrocopter going to pick it up, throw it in his bottle. This could be scary for Fnatic. Gyrocopter with a double damage at the 25 minute mark is something to be reckoned with. Yeah, it might seem like a little thing, but Mag passed him his own bottle, and that's just really smart team play, because now Gyro can wait to use the DD until the right moment. Yeah. One minute to go. I don't think they'll go high ground. Just back off, farm the enemy woods, and defend the tier 2 top, because they're not going to be able to push before the Aegis expires. Yeah. And he's almost got MKB, so big items coming out for Empire. Not just that, but I imagine Vank score. No, he's Dyer's he's been buying the ward, so. Yeah. Just an MKB is a big pickup, though. Yeah. And Scythe for Invoker coming fairly soon. Not a good time to take a risk with Simon only 600 gold off. Better just to sit back and farm, get the item up, and then make that team fight happen. Aegis going down in 30 seconds, as you mentioned. So they will. Well, looking Always better for my it. prediction right now, buddy. Knock on wood. It certainly is. Come on, fanatic. Come on, fanatic. Nah, you're you're biased. Contrast <laughs> sticks together. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm biased in favor of Russian Dota after going to Kiev. I had a, I had a lot of fun at Starladder, and I'm a little makes bit you jealous. appreciate the the community there quite yeah. a bit. They're they're some of the most passionate fans in the world. That they were very yeah. loud, even for and hold hold that thought. Bottom lane. Uh oh. Trixie going to get put to sleep. There's the call down to start it off. A defensive weave comes out. Fiend's grip used as well. But Silent will turn in about face. Now Van scoring some trouble. He does have a TP scroll. He will move into the fog and does survive. So a noble effort, but Bristle probably not the best target to try and kill in a two-man gank. Uh oh, they've seen this Luna. Oh, there's the hook shot from Mag. Cogs to come out. Era will use the BKB and just pour it out straight away. And obviously Mag a little bit scared that perhaps the Eclipse could have come. Yeah, good play from both players. Mag saw, saw the Eclipse could come, and Era knew if he Eclipsed, Mag would just force Staff in, into the fog and run away. So. Yeah. Does force out a 10-second BKB charge. I believe that was the 10-second. Yeah, it was. Yes. So that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, absolutely. And it's on cooldown now. And early on, when you have max charges, BKB has a long cooldown. So they'll have like a good minute here where they can look to fight if they want. Yep. And Empire will have their forces grouped up about the mid. We see some pings coming out onto the Ancients. We saw Fnatic trying to snipe the Empire Ancients, and now they're going to get a taste of their own medicine as Empire come in and clean it up. Not the biggest steal, but they do still clear out a couple. It looks like uh, maybe half of a dual stack there or something. Yeah, maybe like 400, 500 gold around that. And also it's denied to Fnatic, so yeah. it works out to be like a 600 to 1,000 gold swing. Yeah. Which and is a pretty big deal. MKB now up on the Gyrocopter. This is the time to fight for Empire. And they will group up in the mid and start pressuring this Tier 2 tower. Now, Fnatic do have a Glyph available. So if they want to make a hold, this is a, an opportunity to do so. It's all about the clock. Does Mag get a good initiation? And ideally, you want to get it on the Chen or the Dazzle. Because if you get it on anyone else, they can just be sent back and graved in the meantime. But yeah, we'll see if that happens. Hani has stunned himself, but not really a good angle to go in. Yeah, Empire looking for an opening. Posturing well in the trees, hoping Fnatic will step too far forward and they can catch one with a Nightmare or a Fiend's Grip or any of their other initiation tools. Invoker still a little ways off that sheep stick, but if they take a successful team fight, should be able to right-click it from that secret shop. Luna is not that strong yet. Doesn't have Manta complete, doesn't have a big damage item, and doesn't have level 3 Eclipse, but will get it like with this wave. So this could be a game-changing level. Maybe not with this wave, actually. No, nope, he's going to need one or two more. Oh, he's so close. They don't want to fight before he gets... <laughs> if he doesn't have yeah. level 3 Eclipse, that's going to be so sad. 11 experience, that will be a sad story. They have seen Mag, though, and they're going on him. He could hook away. Is he going to do it in time? He is going to force Staff. The stun connects. There's the Tornado to buy him some time. And there's the force Staff down to the low ground. EMP will take all the mana from Trixie and also all of the Chen creeps. It's 
actually pretty big if you ch catch the Chen creeps in the EMP. No stuns, no thunderclaps. Oh, he's got hooked now. Fnatic need to back. That was actually a hook shot to safety and after the four staff. And oh, yes, they I'm sorry. Could, could go in again. Yeah. In. They can just keep on sieging. They don't really have to dive or force a fight. Just siege, keep your heroes parked behind Gyro. Because look at Fnatic. How many long disables do they have? They have Alk stun. That's it. Yep. And if they go on him, you just hook in, counter initiate, he BKBs, and you turn the fight around. But they want to play it safe with Roche respawning, and that's definitely a fine choice as well. So they'll back off in 30 seconds from now. They might yeah. just take this rush. Could have possibly press, pressed a little harder to uh, force out the glyph. They did get the tower down to half health, so still decent damage. Though, as you mentioned, not a good time to take risk with Roshan on the horizon. If they took a bad team fight, that could just hand over a free second Roche to Fnatic. With that, though, two big items completed. Luna going to grab herself the Manta style, which is absolutely huge. Era finally starting to come online. But to counteract that, a Sheep Stick now out on the Invoker. In the mid, Trixie and Bag exchanging blows, though the follow-up won't be there on either side. He needs to back off. They have the Hex on Resolution, and it was spotted by the Radiant Ward, which just expired. But, uh, yeah, he'll get out in time. A fresh ward put down by Fnatic outside of the Roche pit. They want to maintain their vision. I think they caught a glimpse of Vanscore moving into the pit. So at least he scouted it out. Roche has respawned now. They might go on Trixie. He's not the hero you want to initiate on. First of all, you're probably not killing him before Hand of God, Grave, and Sendback come out. And mm -hmm. even if you do, then you've thrown everything at their tankiest hero. So... But look at this Lux, Silent with a double damage rune on once again. Going to make this Roche effort a little bit easier for Empire, or at least make this team fight a little bit easier. Silent will take the Unstable Concoction to the face. Empire need to be cautious here. Eclipse in the pit is very, very scary. Another EMP does connect with Trixie. That's the end of the Bristleback's mana. That's a good point because they don't have like a Chen or an Invoker. They don't have a lot of stuff to tank Eclipse, so... Yeah. They do need to be careful about this fight, and now it's the level 3 Eclipse that they did not have earlier. Yeah. So they will use this double damage rune just to clear out the Ancients. I don't believe it was stacked, just the Singleton Ancients. I, I, I'm Fnatic's in a tough spot, though, because, yeah, F Empire's farming Ancients, and they're split pushing with Familiar's top. Yeah. So if they don't back, they'll take damage on their base tower, and they're not going to take Roche now. So if they d as soon as somebody TPs out top, immediately Empire's going to go into the pit, and the they're already, visage. already thinking about it. That hero. What a hero. It really is. <laughs> so Fnatic trying to posture themselves so that they can be around the pit if they engage, but also back off and make a little bit of the make the best of this opportunity to find some farm. Empire have now moved back into the pit. Roche, slightly above uh, half health. The tower's being sieged, and these familiars are tripping away at it pretty rapidly. Yeah. So Fnatic, rock in a hard place. What do you do? Do you maybe give up a tier 3? Do you force a somewhat risky fight? What's it going to be? Whatever it is, they need to get executive quickly here because this standing around the pit, letting their tier 3 take a lot of damage is not working out for them. Trixie will move straight into Roche, going to break the Lincolns and start stacking up that minus armor. There's an Alk stun, but he might stun himself, and oh, this could be an opening. No. They don't see it. He is in the trees, so at least it's fogged. Could have been a lot worse there for Hani. Small stroke of luck. They did find him, though. They hook in, and now Hani's in trouble. Mag has him stuck in the cogs. Hani does have a blade mail, though. He will turn it around. BKB popped by Silent. Hand of God comes out. Hani's going to stun himself again. Oh, no. Chen gets picked off in the backside. We've got two fights erupting. Era trying to get off the Eclipse. He's in big trouble, though. And he's going to be dead before the Eclipse comes out. Down goes Hani as well. It's a complete steamroll in favor of Empire. A four for nil. And Trixie's not out of the clear yet. No mana left. Ice wall comes down, and that's going to be a five for nil. Clean sweep. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ooh. And I think they lost their gem, because did Empire lose anyone? Nope. No, that was a 5 for nil, and Fnatic lost their gem, so make it... I don't even know at this point. That's probably like a 5,000 gold swing going the wrong direction. They probably get like 2k... Yeah. Well, they get the Roche kill, that's like 1k gold. It's a lot of gold. That's, yeah. that's the main point here. And Empire, big items will come out now. Bane's not far off BKB, and Fnatic have no way to cancel a Fiend's Grip once he gets it, so that will be devastating. Resolution already the hex complete that you mentioned and can work towards an Ax, probably the next choice. Yules is not bad here. BKB coming soon for clock. And with triple BKB, Eclipse is no longer very effective. 
Yeah. They just didn't get off a good eclipse in that fight. That he, was the biggest problem. He didn't get it off at all. It's still off cooldown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He Whew. he got Fiend's Grip, and there was nothing to cancel it, nothing to save him. Dazzle was not able to get anywhere near Luna. Got caught from the backside by Invoker. Just yeah. they they got into they got split basically, and Empire had the pincer attack. Glyph already popped from Fnatic. Empire will be able to take out the tier three mid, and this could actually result in Rax. Fnatic have all five alive. But they can they just hold? back and then wait for the next wave? But I don't see any reason for them not to keep on pushing. Yeah, Age is still up on the gyrocopter. Now has Helm of the Dominator. Plenty of sustain in these team fights. BKB complete on the clock, as you were mentioning. Oh, by the way, Vista just 3k gold. Oh, well, would you look at that? He's already got mech ags plus 3k gold. So Assault Caress is amazing on that hero, uh, and especially when you want to be able to break the base. So yeah, I think that's a good choice, but we will see. Pipe True. wouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, very true. Trixie in the front lines. Not going to go for the pipe that we were talking about. Now just going to uh, move into either a Shiva's uh, or an and Assault He's going to move into a feed here. But he is in big trouble. There's the Fiend's Grip. A defensive weave comes out, but I don't think it's going to be enough to keep Trixie alive. There's the Sheep. Dazzle will fall as well. What and are they doing outside of their base? Fnatic need to be sitting defensively in there, and yeah. they're it's hard enough to take a fight in the base, but, well, now they're just completely screwed. Yeah, that was bad news, Bears. I don't know why Trixie was out so far. It almost seemed like he was trying to bait and engage, but then once the engage happened, there was no follow-up. That's the GG. Well played. Nothing Fnatic can do. To be fair, this game was lost at the previous Roche fight. That was Fnatic's last big chance to turn it around. Yeah. Weren't able to do so, and the game just fell apart from there, but... Wow. You know, this this is nice guys finishing last, Sayori. If only Trixie had gone for that kill top <laughs> on the clockwork, Mag would have died and it would have been a completely different game. Yeah. But they didn't. And they yeah. pay the they pay the price. But they didn't. Smart drafting from Empire though. They did last pick Bane, and I think it was such a smart choice here. Bane's a very powerful hero yeah. in a vacuum, but the lack of interrupts from Fnatic worked so well. They had poison touch from Dazzle, it does a mini stun on initial uh initial connection. Mm -hmm. And the unstable concoction, that's it. If neither of those are available, you've got a full duration fiend grip on your hands, and that's no fun for anyone. There was Lucent Beam and some creeps, but I the think beam, okay. his positioning yeah. was the key. He the defensive sleep in the first fight and the mid lane was huge. Completely turned the engagement when Invoker was out of position to help the team. And you also go back to that fight bottom lane, the eclipse wasn't the best. Uh, just yeah. fanatic. Execution was kind of lacking in this game. And they also were running a very greedy draft. No tail moved around a lot early on Chen and then he, he took a while to really get involved in the game after the laning stage. That's kind of the story with this team supports. They do a yeah. lot early, then they have to catch up, and then by the time they get back into it, it's the game is it's mm -hmm. sort of out of their control. Maybe they win, but it's not because the supports play, and it's just because they fall behind early. Yeah. It's hard to, hard to come back at that point. It's true. So that was game one. We've got at least one more game coming up in the best of three. The question is... Will yeah. LD be right with his prediction G with a 2-0 Empire? Give me your rares, Fnatic fanboys. <laughs> give me your rares. So we'll have Game 2 coming up in just a moment, guys. Remember, you're watching the ESP Shock Therapy Cup. There is a ticket for this tournament. Six languages if you want to watch in-game. I held up four fingers, but there are six languages. Jesus, dude. All over the place today. And uh, that ticket is available for $8. You get wards and a HUD. And it is a personally funded tournament. $10,000 on the line. Only six days of action. A ticket worth buying. We'll be back, though, with game number two.